Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I will try and zoom in. I don't know how clear it will come up. Gasket there, the red gasket is completely split. Look at the state of the electrodes. How are you doing everyone? Welcome back to today's video. So Dan the Life of a Gas Engineer. I've got a couple of jobs on this video for you to see. So it's one of them is a Worcester. We, we all love a Worcester knot. Um, and the other is a wiring fault, which was a new installation, but the wiring center hadn't been quite wired correctly. So it was another engineer who basically drafted me in just to have a look over. Most of it was correct, but you'll see what was incorrect. And it wasn't to me, it was obvious what needed to be done, but to anyone who's not familiar with wiring, it wouldn't be so obvious and it would seem correct to, to you if you're not sure about how wiring centers work or what cable does what on a zone valve. So yeah, fair play to him. He tried his best, gave it a go. It was almost there, but I just had to go in and tweak a few things around to get it up and running properly. Also, I, I'm recording this literally an hour or so before the Fury versus Usyk fight. So I don't know what the outcome is, but if you watched it, I hope you had a good night. You know, I'm going to be watching it by myself. Nick is in Vienna, kids are asleep, and yeah, I'm just going to be sitting there and putting the fight on in about an hour's time uh, whilst editing Wednesday's video as well. So, trying to do a few things, but kids are asleep, which is good. Now I can just do my thing and crack on. But listen, thank you all for watching again. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I really appreciate it every time I go on the stats and I see them, them numbers climbing. It doesn't seem that much, but it does give me that little bit of a confidence boost and a little bit of a morale boost to keep this stuff going because it does take a lot of time, especially when you've got a young family and work and everything else. So if you do like the content, please um, hit the like and subscribe buttons. It really helped me out and I'll see you on Wednesday. Now, Wednesday's video is going to be Something a little bit different. It's a how-to video. I'm just going to tell you now that it's a how-to video. It's not a breakdown video, but you might find it helpful. So tune in. See you then. Have a good weekend and hope you enjoyed the fight. How are you everyone? So today I've got this Worcester heat on your boiler. There's a problem with it not working. Obviously, that's why I'm here. The customer reckons it might be the fan. He says that he can hear it trying to fire up, but then nothing seems to happen. So you know the drill, it's a heat only boiler, so there's not gonna be very many components inside it. It's literally gonna be PCB, gas valve, fan, and the burner. But I brought whole fans with me in case the whole thing is seized, and I've also got the fan PCB. So first things first, start from scratch, get the case off, turn it on, see what it does, and then we'll go from there. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I will try and zoom in. I don't know how clear it will come up. Gasket there, the red gasket is completely split. Look at the state of the electrodes. The insulation on them is completely burnt out. It's furring all up there. This boiler has been leaking CO badly. I guess <clears throat> the case seal is still intact, which is the only thing that stopped it from spilling out. I mean, I can't see a seal along anywhere, but I think the fan is probably the least of their worries. At the bare minimum, it's going to need a new burner seal, potentially new electrodes, new flu stat. Let's turn it on. See if we even get a blip on the fan, which I'm not. And in fact, the impellers on there. So that was on already. I think the main spur has been turned off. Okay, so let me go and turn the spur on. But look, the impellers 
I've broken on there as well. What would you do? What would you do? Right, first thing I'm going to do, so I've just been upstairs to the airing cupboard and there is the spare and everything's on, but obviously boiler's not doing anything, so just want to check for power at the board. So what doesn't help is all of the cables are black. They've just used five core, all black cables for some reason. So right, not getting power down here, first of all. Right, let's turn that off and see what's going on. Uh, okay, we've got another two switches here. So I'm not sure, let's first put that one on. And see if that makes a difference. Nope. That's not done anything. Let's try the other one. Let's find an isolator switch. Right now. Oh, okay. Right. So now we've got power. So now let's see. Pull this up. Let's just see what the boiler tries to do. Okay, so the fan's spinning there. Right, the pumps come on. I can hear the water circulating. But the fan doesn't seem to want to do anything else. Okay, so the next next thing to do, if I can get my probes into here. Or even against the earth. That's strange. There's definitely water circulating. doesn't seem like I'm getting full power to the fan. I wonder if it's because of that flu stat. And look, we've got slow flash on there. So let's look at the MIs and see what stats, what that's relating to. Okay. Oh, yeah, no, I'm turning this off. Jesus. Right, that did run. I think the electrodes and the gasket on there are completely shot because I heard and I wasn't risking because I've seen it once before where the flame actually comes out of there. So as soon as I heard that, I'm like, no, should we risk it? No, no, no. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to swear. I can smell gas. So, yeah, no way. Got to deal with this now. Okay, capped it for now. Customer are looking to get an extension done in the future. Well, I think later on this year. So I think it's they were going to convert it to a combi anyway. And I think this has just sort of brought the boiler swap forward. So I'm going to be pointing them up for a conversion to a combi, which is what they've asked me to do. 
and later on when they do the extension we can relocate the boiler it's not a problem but the good thing is flan returns are all here kitchen sink is here so hot and cold can come up there condense and gas is all sweet as well so the gas I was worried about the gas because inside all I could see was 15 mil poking through the wall so I wasn't sure if it was buried in the wall and whatnot but we've got 22 mil run and gas meter is I'll take inside see with the fridges it's right next to the fridge so it's not that long a run literally well you can see where it's coming out of the wall there so not a very long run 22 mil gullies out here for the condensed I'll probably upgrade that or I don't know do I need to if they're going to be doing an extension mm, yeah I'll probably will upgrade it anyway just so that at least in terms of the installation it's all done to regs and it's all done properly just gonna do a flow flow check to see what sort of flow rate we've got on the cold mains and that way I can size the boiler accordingly as well but yeah number of issues here I can repair it obviously but the amount it's going to cost and if they're going to be doing a conversion anyway might as well put that money towards the conversion bring it forward and then move the boiler at a later date so just going to fill out the warning notice for this and then get out of here right i've been calling this on this job where valent 940 has been installed but the person who's installed it they've done the two hives but can't get them to come on so i'm just going to have a look at how it's been wired make sure it's been wired correctly uh, yeah can really see some of this isn't with the right terminals so we've got two zones some are back there and top hive is for this zone valve bottom hive is for this zone valve so i'm, I'm literally just going to start tracing it back find out what's going on and then get the wiring all connected properly here so obviously all the lives there for neutrals are done i think it's just the switches that I need to sort out and then obviously make sure it's been widened correctly up here as well so let's have a quick look let's do this live let me stick a light on here Got that should make things a little bit easier. So let's start with the top one. Right, so leave that there. So yeah, neutral live link to there. That's fine. Now this three that should be going back to the brown on the top zone valve. So that's this cable here. So number three is this grey. Right. See. So that's the first mistake. So that grey is wired in with the gray on that zone valve so that's your permanent life supply so that's why it's not working that needs to be with here that brown so what's actually wired in with the brown the lives so all the lives are wired in with the brown and that's not monitoring over but that's not yeah i need to basically switch around the wiring so what it looks like is the switch live from the hives have been wired into the greys on the zone valves so that's not right because it's sending power to the power cable because your grey is what should be with your permanent live we are doing this as a high voltage so the greys will be with the permanent lives but this grey needs to be with the brown on the corresponding zone valve so that's going to give the power to it when there's a demand for it to motor over then that will link the gray and the orange together send the 240 from the gray to the orange and that will then send power back to the boiler on the rt and get it to fire up so let's let me fix all that up and then i'll come back to it and i'll show you exactly what i've done okay so that's all been rectified so it was literally just swapping over the switch lives so where remember i had two grays in there so i've moved the gray that was in here along with the other permanent lives i've also put a link between there and there because from what i know you're not allowed to put two terminals into one way go it's meant to be one cable per each terminal so i basically just put a link in there to make this one another live terminal bar so we've got permanent life supplies in there the other gray which was here i've moved that into there so now from here these greys are basically the switch lives. They're going to the brown on each corresponding zone valve. 
each of the zone valve now has a permanent power supply. Now the switch lever, which is this grey coming off this cable, just want to make sure that's, yeah, that's wired in correctly there. 24 volt link has been removed. So now should be able to turn it on and test it. Right, the two zone valves are behind the washing machine, so I'm not really going to be able to check on the zone valves, but let's uh, power it up and then I'll just manually do each zone valve and watch for a heating demand to come on here. Right, what's it doing? Boiler's trying to fire up. Why is that firing up? Oh, preheat. Interesting. Oh yeah, of course, it's 940, so it's gonna try and heat up the tanks. So that's fine. Yeah, it's just doing the preheat for the hot water to heat up the tanks. But let me first do that. That should be this top one, so I know you guys can't see it, but I'm trying to see if that's smart ring over. That top one there isn't. This is the bottom one, smart ring over. Yeah, bottom one's marked over. Alright, so that top one is for the downstairs circuit so I might just switch the wires around in here that, that should motor the opposite one so that's actually doing the bottom zone valve and if I do yeah look it's got heat and demand now as well no, it says heat and flood I think it's still heating up the tanks at the back let's do that one that I should feel the spin was at the bottom of this zone valve. Yeah, that's nice and loose. So yeah, it's working. Let's just check. Because it's doing its preheat, it's not gonna fire up at the moment, but we should now have 230. Mm -mm. Right, let me see if I can uh, film this whilst I've got this on. So, yeah, we've got 230 volts. So we've got power at the switch live. So once it's finished, it's preheat. Well, there we go. Heating demands, come on. So I've just got to let it do its thing. I just need to turn the power off and switch the two wires around so that the top, because right now the top one top hive is controlling the bottom zone valve and the bottom hive is controlling the top zone valve so I'm just going to switch the I can either switch the browns over or the greys over from here whichever way but yeah that's it it's all done